Finding Inner Safety is the latest book from physiologist and sleep expert Dr. Narina Ramlakan and takes the reader on a journey of self-discovery, human connection and what it really means to feel safe. This is glued together by Dr. Ramlakan's professional and lived experience, the industry-leading professionals that have influenced her career and the stories of the individuals that she has helped across 25 years of assisting others to overcome burnout, heal trauma and sleep better. In this video, I'm going to break down seven things that I've taken away from this book, as well as how the preventative strategy share can help any individual go from surviving to thriving. Walking the path of healing, thriving, overcoming burnout and finding inner safety starts with us having a clear definition of what safety is and how it manifests in everyday life. In this case, the spiral of safety provides us with a visual reference and delineates how the conscious and unconscious mind receives and interprets information about our internal and external environment. For example, interception relates to sensations from inside the body, such as heartbeat, respiration, and autonomic nervous system activity related to emotion. Whereas, neuroception describes how our neural circuits distinguish whether a situation or a person is safe, dangerous, or life-threatening. Based on this, the spiral provides us with four distinguishable levels of safety. Consciously unsafe, unconsciously unsafe, unconsciously safe, and consciously safe. The idea being that if we're going to heal ourselves and start thriving, we need to have a clear idea as to how our mind and bodies perceive our environment and where we are on the spiral. Speaking of bodies, Dr. Ramla Khan also describes in detail how habituating to hypervigilance in a world where there's increased demand on our senses from noise, technology and speed of information has a psychosomatic response. That is to say that the body has its own set of physical responses based on the level of threat perceived by the autonomic nervous system. One of the ways this manifests is via the increased production of cortisol, commonly known as the stress hormone. This excess of cortisol resulted in a trend described as truncal thickening in those individuals that had habituated to hypervigilance in a high pressure environment. Truncal thickening of course being the clinical term for increased retention of fat around the midsection of the torso. In other words, Dr. Ramla Khan observed a direct correlation between stress and weight loss or in this case weight gain. This psychosomatic response is the body forming a plate of armour to protect itself for what it perceives as a prolonged stay in a threatening environment such as a high pressure working environment and the poor work-life balance that may come with it. Speaking of threatening environments, it's time to talk about flight, fight, or freeze. In this section, we learn about the ebb and flow between the pathways of the autonomic nervous system, how it's evolved over time, and how the environment we habituate impacts our ability to self-regulate, create meaningful connections, and avoid burnout. And in terms of effective self-regulation, it's much harder to do this if we anchor our ability to feel safe to things that are outside of our control. With this in mind, finding inner safety emphasizes the importance of limiting our dependence on external sources of safety including but not limited to our relationship with technology, material wealth, news and social media. This is hands down my favourite part of the book. Dr. Ramla Khan explains several parallels between us and trees and if anything provides a simple yet easy to understand and powerful representation of the individual journey to finding inner safety. For example, the roots represent our experiences in the womb and ancestry, the trunk our upbringing and experiences in our formative years and the overstory such as leaves, branches and blossoms representing how we present to the world. For me this was particularly insightful as when I applied the model to my own upbringing I instantly got a better understanding as to the origin of some of my most prominent traits and tendencies, specifically when it comes to attachment style and sense of belonging. The parallels with trees and the journey to finding inner safety continues as the book encourages the reader to go further back in time. For this, we lean into epigenetics, which is the study of how your behavior and environment can cause changes that affect the way your genes work. In this case, we're describing how traits, experiences, disease, and trauma can be passed down from one generation to the next. The theory here is that by doing the hard work, knowing more about your ancestry and the events that tie you to the past, you can aerate the soil around your roots, reset, heal, connect with your environment, and thrive in the future. The back end of this book provides the reader with practical resources to extract real world benefit from the psychosomatic and neurological theories imparted earlier on. This includes exercises to help you locate trigger points, set intentions and practice gratitude. For me, the idea that when in survival mode the brain is like Velcro for negativity meant that the exercises focused on strengthening the positivity bias of the brain resonated most. Finding Inner Safety references several books, quotes and studies from industry leading professionals in the fields of psychology, neuroscience and psychosomatic medicine. But what really binds all of this together is how it's anchored against the backdrop of Dr. Ramla Khan's personal story. From her family's ancestral roots in India to her early years in Guyana and migration to the UK, traumatic 
experiences witnessed in the family home, the sudden loss of loved ones and mental breakdowns, all the way through to her professional experiences and observations of burnout in high pressure working environments. And how all of this accumulates and leads us up to the present day where fresh out of lockdown, people en masse have started to realize the value of human connection and the role it plays in finding inner safety. For me, this book has been a journey of self-discovery, not only because it has given me practical models to understand the nuances of my own character, but also because I'm left with a deep sense of focus on what's important. Concepts like Dharma or life's purpose, connecting with your environment and the people in it, and the inextricable relationship between ourselves and nature. If having the tools to avoid burnout is important to you, click or tap the link in the description of this video to check the book out in more detail. And don't forget to subscribe for more news, views, hints, and tips from the world of wellbeing.